the uh, health bridge?
So this is for Gail and Jessica O'Gall. Just please give me your name and who you're, uh, rep or who you're speaking for, and then you begin. My name is Lane Novak. I am representing Jessica and Gail O'Gall, who are not able to attend because they are out of state. Um, both of them are pretty much the same letters that I submitted to you. So I'm just going to um, read Mom's letter, Gail. My name is Gail O'Gall, and I'm a resident of the Pacific Plantation Subdivision in Kamanahilo. I'm writing to you to express my concern regarding the proposed charter school's plans and respectfully ask that you deny, excuse me, deny this project. My family and I have lived in this subdivision for over 15 years now and enjoy the friendly community and peaceful setting we have here. My husband and I chose this community as our home to raise our children because it is a safe and quiet environment with very little traffic. It is a community where our children could walk freely play and visit with their neighborhood friends and not have to worry about being in danger. It is a place where we can take afternoon walks with our fellow neighbors without fear or intimidation by outside strangers loitering, loitering around about the area. Although my children are grown now, I am concerned that the building of this school will bring these kinds of activities in our neighborhood to an end for children of the next generation, our fellow neighbors, and for my husband and I as we move into retirement. According to the police department, building a school in a residential area will affect the quality of life for its residents by increasing noise, crime, and traffic. It would be very disappointing to see the safe, peaceful, low traffic community that my family and I moved here for disappear. I strongly feel that a residential community is not the right place to build a school of this magnitude and believe that there are many other promising and practical land options for this project that should be explored and considered. Additionally, the roads on the D10 Kamana Drive are not designed to accommodate the kind of traffic and congestion a school would generate. This traffic would include parents of the students, high school seniors, who will most likely be driving their own cars, buses, and all of the school's faculty and staff. Although the 2009 traffic study suggests minimal effects on normal traffic with the establishment of a school, <coughs> this study is outdated and invalid. In 2009, the saddle road improvements were just in its infancy. With these improvements, the amount of cars now traveling on Kalmana Drive has certainly increased, and I am a witness to that, being that it is a faster way to get to the other side of the island. Adding the school's traffic to this, it will surely have an impact on our commuting schedules and overall quality of life. Therefore, I humbly ask you, members of the commission, to deny this application. Sincerely, Gail Ogawa. Thank you. Um, so one more, correct? Yes. Shelly um, Carl Wagner. Um, your name and who you're representing again. Yeah, I, I apologize. Um, this was one of the um, testimonies I didn't make 10 copies of, so okay. I'll, I'll get it to you. Okay, thank you. I was in such a rush this morning. Um, my name is Lane Novak, and I am um, uh, reading Mrs. Shelly Carvalho Wagner's testimony. She states that although I am unable to pre be present in person this week, I need to ask that my written testimony be considered when determining if the Connections Charter School is, is a good fit off of Edita Street in Kamana. What I request that you consider is the safety and impact not just to our Pacific Plantation subdivision, but the impact of, to Kamana Drive as a whole. I lived in Kahului, Dream City, growing up. In our subdivision, we had approximately 80 homes with two entrances. As our community grew, there was a need for an additional public middle school. My parents were told that it would boost their property value, and because school was Monday through Friday, while everyone was at work, we would probably not see the impact. Well, the school was built, roadways were expanded, and Maui County e even installed a traffic light to what was previously a four-way stop. Aesthetically, the facility was beautiful. Our quiet neighborhood, however, changed forever. What increased was not property value, it was the daily traffic in and out of our neighborhood. A bunch of neighbors, including my dad, was out on the perimeter of our neighborhood on a daily basis, painting over graffiti and cleaning up lots of litter. You guys aren't gonna be like that, right? You kids, no, of course not. Um, it was personal time and money on paint and graffiti cleaners to keep their property from depreciating. We even built, like our neighbors, a higher wall to block students from walking on our fence and getting hurt. I ask you to ponder, what reasons did you have to purchase the property you currently reside in? You may all come up with similar answers. Quiet, safe, neighborhood, 
close to town, value, etc. I'm sure you realize that residents in our neighborhood are hardworking and have invested their lives, salaries to live where we do. We would never have purchased a property that would have a risk to our safety or impact our family negatively in any manner. I'm not against the school being built. I am concerned about the after-the-fact planning or proposing of such a school. The impact it will have on Kamala Drive and the impact it will have on Edita Street um, <coughs> on our daily lives will be significant. Bottom line, I ask you to consider, is this proposal a good fit for our current infrastructure in Kamana? Now, if you are living in our neighborhood, would you feel the same way as us? Or would you approve this project? You need to think about being in our shoes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, Jeff Gomes? He'd like to switch with me if it's possible, because he has to he has to leave, and I can I can stay, if that's okay. Um, that's fine. Put you further down. Okay. <laughs> you on the bottom, dude. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've got to take my boy to um, Kona um, this afternoon. Um, so name, area where you live, and then your three minutes will begin. Sure. Um, my name is Chris Prohanti. I live at 60 Ho'oho Ho, 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 Aloha Street uh, in Hilo. And um, I'm a former resident of Pacific Plantations. I'm a realtor. I'm a son of William and Kathleen Prohanti. My father developed Pacific Plantations in the late 80s and 90s. I'm not here to speak for him. However, I know that he is extremely proud of the community that has developed that is Pacific Plantations. Pacific Plantations is a truly unique and special place, with many owners being here for, from the very start of the subdivision so long ago. Many have chosen to live here for the rest of their lives. My mom owns a lot and she, that she has kept in anticipation that someday she will move to Pacific Plantations and live out her days. Pacific, Pacific Plantations is a type of community that makes Hilo so special. Safe, quiet, secure. It's a throwback to the communities and subdivisions of the past when neighbors knew and interacted with each other. A real sense of aloha. That is, that has been lost in many other places. Pacific Plantations is a hidden and well-protected gem that the residents really hope that you guys will protect. The only reason that I'm getting emotional is because I've been uh, a realtor for 23 years. My dad has, you know, um, done a lot of developments in East Hawaii for over the course of over 30 years. He's very, very proud of his developments. And uh, this is one of them. And I've been uh, chairman of the uh, GAC committee for the Hawaii Island Board of Realtors for many, many years. And I've gone to a lot of testimonies. And uh, most of the time you have a lot of a lot of people in favor or opposed to something. And then you have several, a few people that come in and testify, you know, uh, on the other side. To have this many people, this quality of people, an overwhelming area that's saying that this is not the right fit. They want the connections, it's a great thing, but not in this location. Please listen to the voice of the people that live in this area. Please, 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 okay? And preserve their way of life. That's what they're telling you. They wanna preserve their way of life, and you guys have the ability to do that. And please listen to their concerns, okay? That's all. Thank you. Any uh, questions for this part? Earlier there was a testimony that there were inquiries made on a possible uh, development further down on the by by your Cartesia company that they uh, will be seeking access use of your subdivision road so that they could have another access exit to you out of your subdivision development should it should it pass. Did they, did any of the representatives of the connections come and see you about that? 
You have to get um, clarification on, on the land surrounding Pacific Plantations. That's actually owned by my father. Okay, I've been involved in, in um, the first two increments of Pacific Plantations. I'm not involved in that particular development. And so I can't speak on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. tell you a short story about my family. Last summer, my sister was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, bone cancer. To get the best treatment, our family had to leave Hawaii. We were gone for a year in Seattle, where she got chemotherapy and had many surgeries. While we were away, Connections teachers worked with my sister at the hospital school so that she could continue her education through her fight through life. The school also did fundraising to help with medical related stuff. When our family came back to Hilo, Connections opened its arms, their arms to us, and gave us a family welcome. But this is not the only time Connections has helped my family. I'm proud to say I have autism. Long ago, when I was ready for kindergarten, my mother went to the neighborhood grade school to talk to the people there. After a counselor from the school told my mother that there didn't seem anything, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with me, even though my mother had all the papers from the Oregon Early Intervention School and letters from several doctors on the mainland who diagnosed my autism. The school didn't care. My mother went to another school and another one. These regular schools rejected to give me the special support that I needed <coughs> at the time to get an education. But then we found connections. Instead of a school counselor, they sent me to a local psychologist who confirmed the diagnosis. I was able to get help at school. For years, I had to have a social aid with me, and each one of them has taught me lessons that I'll never forget, like how to talk to people or interact with others. What I learned helped me be here today. This is one of the reasons why I'm upset about the things some people in Kalmana are saying about our school. Maybe the few neighbors who say those untrusting things, think that some of the kids in our school come from poor families, they shouldn't be in a nice neighborhood. <coughs> this gives me sadness to think that people would think bad things about my friends. <coughs> Time's up. Thank you very much. Any questions for this Matt Director? I just wanted to make a comment. And I want you and your classmates to understand this. So I'm hoping that you can go back and tell them since most of them left. Ultimately, any decision that's made here will be 
based on land use issues, traffic issues, um, environmental issues, water availability issues. It is not based on the program or the quality of the education at Connections or the students that attend Connections. It's going to be based on, is this an appropriate <coughs> site? Does it have the necessary infrastructure to support a school here? And it's not at all going to be based on the curriculum of the students. I really want you to understand that, that that's really what is coming from the neighbors. It's, it's not that they think this is a bad school. Um, it's not that they think that it's bad students. It's that they're primarily concerned about traffic and whether this is the appropriate place to put it. And if you were going to put it there, what would you need in order to mitigate the concerns <coughs> of the community? It's, it's not about the, the school and the curriculum and the students and the teachers. And I really want you and your fellow classmates to understand that. Because I think everybody agrees that it is a wonderful program. I'm familiar with Connections when it was up in Mountain View and my, my best friend's kids we're going to school there, and she taught it. Uh, she was a, a teacher's aide uh, up at Mountain View. I'm familiar with it. It's program elsewhere as it moved. We worked on other permits for it, but I really want to make that point because I don't want students to feel that this is the communities against students, and and that it's about rich versus poor or or elsewhere. This really is about traffic. I grew up on Palmetto Drive, and I'm familiar that the traffic's improved greatly with the uh, Puana Cove extension. And I think what you're hearing from the community is the concern that with the Connections campus there, that it will return back to what it was like before, and that it will exacerbate existing problems on it. And, and so I really want you to understand that because it's a good school, it's a good program, and I know that there are good students there. So I want you to be able to uh, communicate that to your classmates. <coughs> and thank you very much for signing up and testifying. You could see that there were adults that were shaking and nervous, and so I think you did a wonderful presentation, and uh, you're a good representative of your school.